Next up, we have contingency of biodiesel compared to diesel. Jenna Dahl, Laney Jones, and Morgan Park. Okay. My name is Jenna Dahl. I'm Laney Jones, and I'm Morgan Tharp. We're all from Bluestone, and we did the efficiency of an alternative biodiesel fuel. For our background, we wanted to start off with what exactly is biodiesel. And biodiesel is an alternative fuel source for diesel fuel. And in 2015, Dr. Brownstein wrote that the ozone layer is at the highest decay that it's ever been in world's history right now, which is why it is important for us to come up with better alternative fuel sources so we can stop using our resources and our biofuels. The best option for us was waste soybean oil because it was the most obtainable and it was less expensive than all the other options we had. And if you can see FAME up here, which stands for fatty acids and methyl esters, that is the most popular way for making biodiesel now. And the ratios for our diesel fuel, that was the way we tested it. We decided to do 25% and 50% mixed with the other alternative with the fuel. And the Environmental Protection Agency was the first agency to legalize biodiesel fuel and decide it was a very good additive with diesel fuel. Our research question states, is waste soybean oil more efficient than regular diesel fuel? Our research and alternative hypothesis matched. We initially believed that the 75% diesel fuel and the 25% biodiesel was gonna be the best and the most efficient because we know that diesel fuel is good to run in vehicles and we were positive that the biodiesel would work as good additive. Our null hypothesis stated that there was gonna be no difference in the ratios of biodiesel to diesel. For our materials, we needed beakers, blender, a cheesecloth, cheese diatomaceous earth, diesel engine, distilled water, funnels, a glass stirrer, graduated cylinder, goggles, heat protection gloves, a hot plate, Kevlar lab coats, lab quest, a magnetic stir bar, mask, methanol, a mortar and pestle. We used Mr. Perini and his automatic class, plastic waste containers, potassium hydroxide separatory funnels, temperature probe, and used soybean oil and vinegar. For our methodology, we first had to purify the oil to get rid of any food particles that could possibly still be in the oil by heating it up and running it through cheesecloth and Kevlar. Then we combined 100 milliliters of diatomaceous earth with the oil to get rid of any excess water. Then we made our potassium methoxide solution, which also gets rid of excess water and breaks up triglycerides within the oil. We used 6.25 grams of potassium hydroxide with 200 milliliters of methanol to make our potassium methoxide. Then we distributed it into separatory funnels and washed it with vinegar and distilled water. And in this picture over here, that's our washing process. You can see our biodiesel sitting on the very top layer. And on the bottom is all the drained vinegar, water, and diatomaceous earth that we're trying to get out. For our testing, our mentor, Mr. Printy, disconnected the fuel system so we could use a gravity fuel pump to insert our fuel into the vehicle. We also tested exhaust emission, engine temperature, and engine runtime. Up in the corner, this is our pure diesel fuel, this is our 25% biodiesel, this is our 50% biodiesel, and this is 75% biodiesel. This is all three of us inserting the fuel into our truck, and this is me and Morgan doing the exhaust emission. So this is our data table, it shows our results. Our runtime gradually increased with the, um, in, in, the improved amount of biodiesel it went from 5 minutes and 38 seconds to 9 minutes and 54 seconds, so it almost doubled. Our exhaust emission seems to increase gradually, but when we get to the 75% biodiesel, it drops. The engine temperature, we measured at the first 400 degrees, and the second, the first 400 milliliters and the second 400 milliliters. The engine temperature didn't really change. It stayed pretty constant throughout the whole process. On the left, that's the engine runtime. It gives you a better view of how it increases throughout. On the top right, it shows the exhaust emission, which you can see where it gradually increases and then drops with the 75% biodiesel. And the engine temperature, you can see where it remains constant. At 25%, it kind of drops a little, but for the rest, it's pretty consistent. 
for our results and findings, we did not support our, hypo our hypothesis originally. We originally hypothesized that the 25% diesel, the 25% biodiesel and the 75% diesel fuel would work the best, and it was actually backwards. The more biodiesel, the better it was. As the ratios of biodiesel increased, the sound, the smell, and the engine runtime improved. It actually smelled like french fries in the shop that we were doing it, because that's where we got the fuel from. And if you look up here, at the very, very top is our just regular diesel filters that we used up against the exhaust pipe. And as you go down, it's 25%, 50%, and 75%. And you can see that there's less and less soot on the filter papers, and they're almost green if you get to the 75%. And for our conclusion, our waste soybean oil was the best and most efficient option for us. It increased in runtime, sound, smell, and engine temperature. And this is us three with the shop class and Mr. Prince who beside our truck that we used. We came across many problems during this experiment. We first wanted to test three different biodiesels against each other, including raw macadamia nut oil, raw vegetable oil, and waste vegetable oil, which is what we did. We also went through two processes before we found this one that actually worked. We had, we had a lot of scheduling issues, and we couldn't find a diesel engine to use, but luckily our mentor, Mr. Printy, brought one to SBCC that we could use in the shop class. For our impact and expansion, we would like to go into looking at other biodiesel fuels like we were originally going to do, such as macadamia nut oil and regular vegetable oil. We also want to look into how different oils are specific to certain areas, such as in Australia, macadamia nut oil is a 